Hello everyone, welcome to a new banner review. This time we'll be taking a look at Mythic Altina, which, spoiler alert, is a fairly broken unit. So, Altina, a character that is just barely referenced in Path of Radiance, uh, to be blessed by Ashera, which is an actual goddess, which would have been the actual mythic hero. As far as I understand it, legendary hero are just mortals that have immortalized themselves by doing legendary feats. Which is exactly what Altina is, but apparently that makes her a mythic. What? She is not a goddess, she is a mortal. In fact, she's dead by the event of Path of Radiance. All you have about her is a few bits of story and a CG of how she looks like. Ironically enough, if that's all you need to be a mythic hero, you could actually use the Crusaders from Genealogy of the Holy War and make them mythic heroes as a result. And I'm also guessing that it extends to, oh, I don't know, the first crest bearers of three houses. In fact, you even fight one of them in three houses, so I could actually see that, that one becoming a mythic beast unit. Those who actually know who I refer to, probably know who I refer to. <laughs> but, nitpick aside, she comes with one of the most disgusting kit I've ever seen. You want to complain about the fact that Legendary Marth and Zelgus got three unique skills? No, most people didn't complain about it. You know why? Because Zelgus is a fan favorite. Because Marth is a fan favorite. They aren't what people would call nobodies, which is more or less what Altina is. She's not a nobody in the sense of the lore, but she's a nobody in the sense that next to no one know about her. And if they do know about her, it's a fading memory. Not to mention, Zelgius had stuff like War Powder, which is just accurate to, to the story. And that's kind of really it. It's just a very basic skill that doesn't really do a whole lot for him. But it's a neat addition because it's it's a reference to how he worked in Radiant Dawn. And same thing with Marth. The Binding Shield is literally the shield in which you would be putting the gems in. And then it turns into the Fire Emblem. Wow. So it makes sense that it's actually part of his kit. And while everything here makes sense that it's part of, their, uh, of her kit... Marv's kit was balanced. This is not balanced. This is quite the opposite, in fact. You know what balances flyers? And the fact that they have a ton of mobility, access to Azura, pushing their movement to 3, and so on and so forth. The thing that actually makes it work is the fact that they have a weakness to Harrows. And if they want to get rid of, the, of that weakness, they have to get rid of their A slot for something that only deals with this, or their seal slot with a thing that only deals with this. Yet, while I did just say that, Altina throws that out of the window completely. Here's what the problem is. Okay, I'm just not even going to refer to their special yet. That's an entire beast by itself. Two cooldown unique specials are typically very busted, and this is no exception. However, Ragnar Alondite. Unit can counter attack regardless of foe's range, inflict speed minus 5, which doesn't matter because her speed is terrible anyway, and it's still salvageable, mind you, because she is a flyer. Unit attack twice, even if foe initiates combat. This is a multi-phase brave weapon with distant counter. So let's say you're using Keaton, who has a brave weapon with Wodao uh, one transform. 
It's 11 might when he's transformed. So one more might. But he has to run this encounter, which is the way that it balances the weapon. And Keaton is by no mean a weak unit. He is insanely strong, but he has his own weakness. Low res, for example, is his weakness. Low speed also. And the fact, again, that he has to sacrifice his Isla for this encounter. You don't have any of this here. You don't. And that's the problem. No, 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 no. Instead, your A skill, which should have been this encounter, is now in your weapon. Which means your A skill is completely open. And on top of that, they capitalize on it by giving it one of the most busted effect of all time. This is a tag def solo. This skill is a tag def solo, except if, if you have a dragon or a beast next to you, it's not turned off. And to add insult to injury, it's also getting rid of her one weakness, which is the fact that bow units are effective to her. That's gone. So you're telling me you're getting rid of your weakness, and because you are you have this encounter in, the, in your weapon, you effectively have a 16 might weapon because you get 6 attack from the A skill. Let me just put it this way. If you take Xander, okay? If you take Xander and you take his A slot and give him like attack death solo, and you just compare the weapons from Altina to Xander, okay? Well, you have six more attack, but you only hit once, while she hits twice. And if you're comparing Keaton to her, well, you have 17 might, 6 death, versus his 11 might Wadao effect. Yeesh. So yeah, Altina is utterly busted, and then now we talk about the special. You know what is really annoying about this? Units like Brave Ike, yeah, they don't get an easy time either. If this unit even gets as much as one charge before fighting your Brave Ike, your Brave Ike dies. Simple as that, because Twin Blades will completely shut down her vent. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Not to mention, Twin Blade does a ton of damage. Just a unmerged unit of Altina with a res buff gets 16 damage out of a res. Yes, this is actually the same numbers as Ira. Actually, yeah, no, it is. Though a buff will push Ira's damage a bit more. It's just that Ira does not have a good pref, and you have to downgrade to a slaying sword, not a brave weapon in both phase DC weapon. You know, bit of a difference, huh? So, yeah, uh, this is very iffy. This is extremely iffy. And you know what else? Vantage Heavy Blade Twin Blades is a thing you can do. Vantage proc, you hit back and then you proc. Every single time! So if the enemy doesn't have already bearing, or... already bearing, you know, dancers, or... Dazzle Staff, or Fire Sweep... Well... They'll typically get their entire team just slaughtered by Vantage Altina. In case you don't know, the I and AR meta nowadays is literally Vantage meta. Levitain is considered the current best Vantage user because she is insane in AR for that very reason. The fact that she can hit like 90 attack with Vantage. Yet, here comes a unit that actually outdoes her. Despite not having a blade tome weapon as well. That's just disgusting. 
but it is what it is. You'd think they were, they would be, you know, smart as well. Last month we've got Legendary Leaf, and he had an impact effect on his weapon. Except it was only working in the player's hand. That was a great move from Ayas. I even complimented them on this. Because it made the unit not cancer to deal with. But at the same time, it gave a... It gave him a niche that made him work really well with specific skills, like brazens. Yet here, they, they seem to have completely forgotten that, and just decided to give this unit absolutely everything they could. If the brave effect was only working in the player's hand, I would be a lot more fine with this. But it's the fact that it works in the player's hand, and when you have to deal with it, that becomes really annoying. Another, another team comp that's very used in AR defense is the Ward team comp. Ward Flyer Balls. In case you don't know, she has 36 res. If you put, oh, I don't know, her in the middle of five more wards. Yes, five more wards. You will have 56 res. This is unbuffed. 56 res is already kind of iffy, isn't it? If you have any way to buff that res by, say, 6... ...and have merges on her... ...you're at now 66. 66. To put this in perspective... ...a Reinhardt that's fully merged up, attack plus, plus 10... Of course, and everything. We'll typically have 62 attack, I believe, on initiation. Uh, maybe a bit more now with sturdy blow 66, let's just say. That's 79 attack with combat triangle. That's 13 times 2. You do 13 times 2 to Altina. You fail to get the kill. And don't even think of using Swordbreaker to beat to beat this, because she'll typically have so much damage. And because of the 66 res, of course Twin Blade is going to hit like a truck. It's going to do an extra 25 damage. 25 damage! On top of an already insane amount of attack. Meaning your Reinhardt is very much dying from this. Jesus Christ. Even with very little merges... In a flyer ball, you can actually tank a plus 10 Reinhardt because of this. This is disgusting. This is extremely disgusting. Yet, this is something this, this unit can do. Face tank Reinhardt, despite being a red, and despite the fact that the enemy is using a brave weapon on her. My jam key, who has 65 attack would typically fail to get the kill the second that there's even, like, merges up to, like, I think, plus four. Let alone wards. She is extremely oppressive to just deal with, as a result. And it's not like we don't have Beast Flyers. Raisin exists. And so does Naga. So... Her, her effect on her uh, A slot is very easy to proc still. And that just adds insult to injury at this point. It's just way too much. Way, way, way too much. Yet for some reason this is where we are. Anyway, let's talk comparison. Man, guys, remember Katria, the unit that came out, uh, oh, what was that, um, a month ago? that basically took the spot as the best offensive red flyer of the game? Uh, yeah, she's already beaten. After all, what's better than Astra... Like, Astra Sword, sorry. I forgot they had the name of the weapon type because Astra's, Astra Bow is also a thing. Well, it's the same offense, but with a brave weapon. Oh, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? 
Oh, and a unique special, meaning that you actually don't struggle with damage. In fact, you can be doing very comparable damage to Altina. And another thing is the fact that if you attack, you hit twice before the enemy get to hit you. You can do that with Katria, but it requires desperation. Otherwise, you hit, get hit, and then hit again. Except Altina basically has desperation in her one initiating because the fact that her weapon's a brave weapon with 16 might because of her A skill. But to add insult to injury, on enemy phase you can have vantage to prevent taking any damage as well. Katria will have to take damage. Katria has a weakness against flyers. Katria has less bulk overall. I think I've made my point. Altina is just a straight up great to Katria, despite the fact that Katria came out like a month ago. It's ridiculous. And then you have Keaton. Right, Keaton. You'd think, oh, hey, he's literally the infantry unit with the most attack of the entire game. Surely, he's going to have more attack. Nope. Because the thing with Keaton is you typically want to run DC Vantage. Man, that sounds familiar, right? Uh, but because you have to use your A slot for this encounter, you don't get the 6 attack death that uh, a certain other individual gets. In other words, Altina, with attack plus, her weapon and her A skill in mind, hits 58 attack. Keaton, with attack plus, and his weapon, as well as this encounter, one transformed has 56 attack. He is behind Altina by two attack as a result. What the hell? So Altina has more attack. What else does she have? Oh, and that's something I did not mention with Katria. She has a rest stat. A rest that allows her to use ploys. In other words, if you deploy the enemy, you have effectively 7 more attack than Keaton. Why? And then you add the fact that, well, Keaton doesn't really gain anything from infantry, from being an infantry. Let me put it this way. No CDS drop, you lose Vantage. And you don't really have a rest at anyway, so you can't really go and just wing it that way. Then there's the fact that, oh, uh, how about Infantry Breath? Well, you could do that or you could use Brave Lucina, but Altina also has access to Brave Lu Lucina, so... Wow. Um, 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 wow. I guess you can use Bonus Doubler. Oh, you lose this encounter! The only thing that he really has going for him is infantry hexblade and you know there's also infantry rush and infantry flash but those don't matter because brave lucina exists as well just as usual right so yeah infantry hexblade which requires you to have someone next to you which means you're actually doing worse because aversa is a very common unit Wow. That's kind of depressing. I suppose in Arena with Infantry Hexblade, though, he does do slightly better um, than Altina. But it's really just in Arena, where you don't have to deal with Aversa and such, and such units. It's honestly quite depressing. Because, as I said, Altina is not exactly a popular pick. She was literally not even an option to be voted for in Choose Your Legend 1, 2, and 3. Let that sink in. Ike's mom could be voted for, but not her. I, it just, it buckles my mind that they actually decided, oh yeah, let's make her the most busted sword unit of the entire game. Because yes, I do think she is the strongest sword unit currently of the entire game. It's not even close. It's not even close. <sighs> so.
So, yeah. As far as builds are concerned. So there's already an error on this that I see. Uh, it is the fact that the one on the right has three more HP. I'm sorry about this. Uh, the unit builder is very good at being consistent at its incompetence. I wish I was joking, but no. They had the HP stat properly, and then the attack, speed, death, and rest stat made no sense. Oh, and just to add insult to injury, I calculated 4 stats out of 5 for Altina. I calculated them perfectly, yet even when they got the stats, they did not manage to put the stat properly. I do not understand how bad this set is managed. It's like they don't try. <sighs> anyway. So, set on the left. Uh, like I said, she comes basically pre-built. All she needs is just reposition and death ploy slash attack ploy depending on what you're wanting to do. So, you end up with 46 death and res as well as 68 attack and if you ploy the enemy in defense you effectively have 73 attack. Vantage procs, first hit, second hit procs Twin Blades. Twin Blades currently has 46 res, is, well, doing a good chunk of damage. 18, in fact. So behind the whole 73 attack twice on top of a 18 damage special, here's another thing you can do with this. You want to go really, really insane? Use Brazen Attack Res as the seal and use Brave Lucina to back her up. Suddenly you have 10 more attack and 10 more res. And you don't need Heavy Blade either anymore. Hmm. Hmm. In other words, you're sitting at 78 attack, and if the enemy is ployed in death, 83 attack. But to add insult to injury, you also end up with 56 res. Why is that important, you ask? Twin Blade, of course. You get a 22 damage bonus from Twin Blade now. 22! You have the full power of 83 attack hitting twice on top of 22 damage from a special. I wish I could make that up. I. Oh my god. She really only has one very good set, but it's just so potent, you might as well just use it everywhere. And that's kind of gross to me. As for the set on the right, you might think 35 speed is not enough, but then you realize golds are a thing and so is Camilla. Camilla with drive speed, a refine, and gold flyers will push her speed by 10. Effectively making her speed 45, and that's with only one character buffing her, and with an ally support on top of it, this can go as high as 47 speed. If you have, if you have Camilla like this, it might even be better to use attack speed bond, because this makes you completely immune to attack and speed debuffs. Not to mention... Not to mention, uh, the fact that with attack speed bond, you can even decide to just, you know, use wards and such skills. Um, because, I mean, at that point you can just use aerobatics, combo it into attack speed bond. That'd be just fine. Yeah. Ugh. <sighs> Either way, I'll just keep Brazen in mind here. 
with speed ploy, that 45 speed can go up to 50, and if you have Camilla support, 51, 52. That's just, like I said, you can quad with this. It's not that hard. And on top of it, because of Camilla, your 71 attack is now 78. And if you add another go, that's 82. And with a drive attack seal on that, that's 85. That's with two people supporting you. Two people. Again, I wish I was joking, but this is an actual thing. But yeah. Now, enough about Altino. Let's talk about the banner, shall we? As per usual, I'll go from worst to best color. Green is the worst. While Yarne is the best green cav, honestly, he does not do a whole lot. He basically allows you to have another Gale Force unit without actually, you know, having to give him Heavy Blade, which is great. That's helpful for him. But at the end of the day, it's nothing really required. He also has attack speed solo, and that's basically the only thing worth foddering him for. But even then, attack speed solo really is more niche than anything. Next up is Summer Levitain. Summer Levitain has mirror impact. That is actually quite a good skill, since quite a few units have good death, good attack, but bad res. If you can actually make their speed work on top of it, then, oh boy, this can be very spicy. So yeah, that's pretty good. As for a Buyoi board, well, that one really depends. It's a green tome that gives 4 attack and res once you have a buff on you. This can be good for characters like, say, um, Bowie, if you want to have a multi-phase effect that does not require positioning, like all tome. Uh, but that's kind of it. Uh, it's mostly characters with higher death than Rez, and Merrick is not one of those, because Merrick actually has an insanely good pref, unlike Bowie. Gold on minus one is insane on mages, and if you get five attack and speed on top of it on a unit that actually struggles with speed, then it's just better. What can I say? And next up is Speed Tactic Chan herself. And I've said everything I had to say about that unit. Moving on to Colorless. <laughs> now, Colorless is arguably worse than Green. However, while Duma is a wheelchair and while Guntre is a dagger calf for some reason, which means she is damn right unplayable, sadly, considering that was actually a unit I wanted to plus 10 when I, when I learned that she was, in fact, <sighs> on the banner, until I found out that she was a horse unit with a dagger unit. God damn it. Well, while both of these are kind of not great, and Defra Solo is very niche as, as well as Bold Fighter, Fjorm, on the other hand, is anything but niche. She is an insanely good unit that will shut down any dancer you have to deal with in AR, which is massively helpful. And on top of that, well, let's just say this. Ground Orders, fantastic fodder. Another thing with Fjorm is that she has a very unique niche outside of the isolation. The fact that you can have isolation and sudden panic work, because both of these skills require high HP in the first place. Also save you the trouble of, of looking for my video as far as Fjorm is concerned, you want HP plus if you can. Because at the end of the day she's not really meant to fight, she is meant to support. And if her HP is not high enough, supporting becomes a bit harder. But yeah, Fjorm is almost a must have, I'd say she, I'd go as far as to say that she is the second best unit of the banner. Next up is Blue. Boy oh boy Blue. Tiki is good, but she starts to really show her age. Uh, gonna be completely honest here. I do wish we, we could start getting like pref skill refinement. And I really wish they would just make so that with everyone would also give her like an extra point of movement. 
So that way, Fallen Tiki is not outright better, though she basically is, but this would allow her to function as a unit. And it would also be kind of funny, well, not funny, but adorable, just the idea of Tiki just pushing herself to keep up with the rest of the team because she wants to stay with her friends. I don't know, I find that the concept adorable, but that's just me. Still, I still use her every day as far as AR is concerned. Because she is my best tank, especially this season. She has like 60 death and 55 res currently. It's ridiculous. And if it was Astra season, she'd be at 65 death. Which is kind of overkill, but I mean, not gonna complain. But yeah, still a decent unit. Um, but if you want to know my opinion between merging her or Fallen Tiki, I'd say go Fallen Tiki. And if you can, fall in Corrin instead. Despite the fact that I despise Corrin, she is just better. Next up is Julia, and Julia is... Yeah, yeah she's okay. <laughs> she's annoying to deal with in the arena purely because she's a two-movement unit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assure you, Alm is far more frustrating to deal with than Julia. Unless you're really, like, reliant on buffs, and your bonus unit... Miss the kills because his buffs are being just denied. But this is something that's going to be more or less resolved by, I want to say, um, what is it, like next week that Egren's banner is over? Where we might get Drive Attack in the pool. Drive Attack cannot be nullified by her B skills, so that won't be too much of a problem anymore. And then we have uh, Fjorm, the unit that requires to be plus 10 to even function. Don't bother with that one. <laughs> Just don't bother. Moving on. And now we have red. Red is probably the best color. I will say Marth is not great. Not anymore. I, I think he's decent, honestly. But while he's decent... He's kind of showing his age. Being a dedicated dragon killer really does not matter. Binding Blade is... Binding Blade, sorry. Binding Shield is not great by any means. Uh, it's an okay B skill, but it's typically a skill that you're going to get rid of, or you're going to use it with Armor Smasher uh, to ensure killing all dragons, especially Fallen Corrin, while also killing armored units. It's a very niche B skill, and just overall not that great. I'd say Wrath is probably the best way to go about it. And his weapon is really good. His special is okay. I do think, as far as a damage dealer though, Ira is just a superior version of him. Ira just does more damage, and has an easier stat line to use. Not to mention, is on those weekly banners, and weekly banners just have way, way, way better odds. On average, plus standing a legendary hero, okay, requires 2,200 orbs. Don't worry, I know. I've merged like four, and I'm in the process of merging a fifth. <laughs> it is a painful process. However, plus standing a Ira on average, with the weekly banner rates, would be off of that at 1.1k, and potentially even less. That is insane, and honestly, that is a huge, huge incentive to go for Ira over him. As for what else, uh, we have Sophus. Sophus is okay. Um. The main thing she has is the fact that she has no weakness, much like Altina, but unlike Altina, she does not have a Brave effect that works on both phases, as well as, you know, a unique A skill that is actually extremely potent. In fact, she has no unique skill outside of Sirius, which is still a fairly solid skill that allows her to heal, but outside of that, it's... 
you know, not much. Altina has overall a better special, which, while a bit more situational, well, let's just put it this way, she won't really struggle to kill unless she is in said situation in the first place. But yeah, uh, I do think Altina is slightly better. You do need to go Death Plus or Attack Plus with Altina to hit 170 BST, however. So do keep that in mind if you do plan on merging her. Which should not be too much of a surprise, you will be going Attack Plus regardless anyway. But yeah, not much else to say here. <sighs> This banner, man. It's it's something, all right. Before we go, though, I want to talk about something else, which is Igren. Now, Igren has a few problems. She has been mismarketed, or false advertised, rather. So I'm just going to go over this quickly. If you want a better breakdown of it uh, a friend on discord posted what I basically sent as an inquiry to um, to intelligent system through the feed the, the inquiry system however this is what I'm talking about so guardian bow accelerate special cold a special trigger cooldown count minus one effective against flying foes this is the issue if unit speeds over foe speed, inflicts attack speed death minus 5 on foe during combat. This is where they falsely advertise this. The way it's written, it works the same way as Flashing Blade. Flashing Blade, you can actually influence the, the unit with drives. Meaning you don't really have, like, if it was working as advertised, life and death would not be required. You could run close counter and then just, you know, have speed buff from, say, uh, Brave Lucina covering your speed so you could actually still go attack plus. And still get to proc the weapon, and the weapon would be very good as a result, making you able to work as a fairly solid tank. You cannot do this. You know why? Because they forgot to add the clause at start of combat at the start of the weapon. Or rather, like, effective against flying foe. At start of combat, if unit speed is over foe speed, inflicts attack speed death minus 5 on foe during combat. This is what it should have been written. But since it's not, since it wasn't written, it was just falsely advertised at this point. What I'm hoping they do is just rectify the weapon to work as it was advertised to do. But time will tell on that one. I really, really hope they do end up fixing this though, because... To put it in perspective... Ephraim has a weapon that's based on attack. If his attack is higher than the enemy, he gets a follow-up, right? Simple as that, right? Okay, okay. Uh, if he do if he runs like say double brazen and because of this he hits 80 attack instead of 66 like what he has on the field and the enemy has a visible attack of 79 you still get your follow-up okay because the brazen make your attack 80 and 80 is higher than 79 but the way this works you could run brazen attack speed seven okay on Igren, which is plus 17 speed. Be plus 10 with all the dragon flowers without speed plus. So you'd be at 48 speed, but because of brazen attack speed 7, you'd be at 65 speed. Yet the weapon would not proc if the enemy has 48 speed or higher. I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from with this, because this is not the type of thing that should even be a thing. If you want Igren to work right now as a tank, you have to go Speed Plus, but Speed Plus does not work with the AoE set either, which actually hurts her versatility. And this comes from someone that actually spent 800 orbs on the unit, expecting to get something that she actually did not have. 
I hope they do something similar to what they did with Legendary Azura. And just... You know, instead of just fixing the text. Which, by the way, before someone asked, Oh, maybe it's just uh, the translation that's bad. No, no, actually that's not the case. The, the English translation is perfectly what the Japanese translation is. In Japanese, it doesn't say at start of turn either. Meaning it should work like Flashing Blade, but it does not. This is just false advertising. Plain and simple. It's it's actually like... I'm pretty sure it's just a, a fucking mistake. But this can be considered as fraud. To some extent. It would be one thing if it was just me that misread. I would just call myself a dumbass and move on. But that's not the case. And I do want to extend my apologies for, you know, the the video where I showcased Igran and everything. Because I was expecting the, the unit to behave in a certain way. Like everything that has this type of condition does. Yet it did not. So, yeah. <sighs> really hoping this gets fixed. But yeah. I'm not trying to mention this, but... Uh, someone left a breakdown of what I basically said to the customer service. I have still not gotten my answer, by the way, so... Don't expect me to actually explain on that yet. However, I do want to say that if you want this issue to at least gain some traction, or better yet, if you want to, you know, spread the word, please spread the Reddit. I'm going to leave it in the description. And yeah, hopefully this gets solved. Because unlike Cleaner, which is just them fucking up a description like later on, this is just genuinely, like, marketing a unit for something it's not. And, you know, the fact that it's at start of combat just doesn't work for this. What's the point of getting fa of gaining, or rather, inflicting speed minus 5 if I need to already get, like, more speed from outside sources to double because the weapon just doesn't want to proc because it procs with your visible stats like what the one good thing that this does is if you're say 48 speed and you deal with a 47 speed arm and he has swift sparrow which would put his speed at 54 while you'd be at 48 your weapon actually still procs so you'd be at 53 and he doesn't get the double but like that's super niche that's super super niche and it's also extremely annoying to calculate but yeah hopefully this gets resolved and yeah I don't think I have anything else to say here To go back to Altina, in conclusion, this unit is utterly busted, and if you're going to be pulling for anything, try to pull for either Fjorm or Altina. The other two colors are not exactly something I would say worth pulling for, unless you actually really want the character in particular. And yeah, I don't have anything else to say, so... See you all later. Have a nice one, everyone.